This is the official Supercoach NRL podcast team list Tuesday with Tom Sangster and Rob Sutherland. I am not Tom Sangster. I'm Rob Sutherland. And if you look to my left... That's not Tom Sangster either. Yeah, I'm not Rob Sutherland either. I was no. wondering whether I was going to have to wear a Hawaiian shirt with you hosting, but yeah, I asked Tom, and apparently it's written into your contract, and you're the only person in the building that is allowed to wear a Hawaiian shirt. So this is, this is true. On. It's the only thing written into my contract, mm. which is really sad. I need to get a, a better lawyer. Um, <laughs> so, how are you, mate? How did you fare over the... You were just saying yeah. before we came on, it was a very long round. Long round of footy, yeah. Um, it was a nice long weekend, so I enjoyed the time off, and... Um, but as for Supercoach, I mean, it's no week yet has been the week where I've gone, yes, you know, some weeks have been a bit worse than others. It wasn't a terrible score this week. It was like 1,065. I think I'm in about 29,000. So slowly creeping back up. And, you know, there's a few fires to put out, but there's a lot I like with what's going on as well with my side. So I'm just going to play the, play the game and see what happens. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like my team's finally starting to look like it should, which yep. is tragic because I spend weeks before the start of, the, of yeah. the season thinking that I've got my team looking just right. But I had I picked all these mid-rangers, you know, at second row forward like all of us did, yep. and I basically got every one of those picks wrong. Yeah, well, not many of them paired out. Them, I've just pulled the trigger and I'm getting it back to where it should. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, not many of those mid-rangers have really panned out, so it has been awkward. It's kind of seemed like the spend a little bit less there or spend a bit more was the way to go, but it didn't look like that going into it pre-season. No, I thought I was a, god, a goddamn genius going into it. But anyway, anyway, that's enough about me and you and us. Mail, early mail, what do we know? Galvin and Plath, they're out. Um, Lachlan Galvin and... What's it? Max Plath? Mm. Max Plath have taken the two-week plea. Um, Latu Finu is going to come in for Galvin at the Tigers. So one young half out, another young half That's in. exciting. Bud Sullivan, just 500k, sitting on the bench doing nothing. Yeah, like I no no um, knock on Bud Sullivan, but I just kind of felt in that first round he kind of didn't look like he didn't really work. Did yeah, it? yeah, and I thought that maybe over the next two weeks that might bring the Tigers back a little bit. But if this other young fellow can sort of bring a bit of excitement as well, then maybe they don't lose as much as what we think with Galvin out. Big shoes to step into. There. Galvin yeah, has looked so it. impressive, yeah. like just so impressive at the start of his career. Uh, Jackson Hastings back for the Knights. They're sort of that. Not, having three halves isn't really working, is it? Mm. It's like just rotating one out, one out, until they sort of work it all out. So they're yeah. going to bring him back into the halves? Who's dropping out there? Uh, Gamble. Gamble goes, Cogger stays, which yep. for mine probably, probably should have done that in the first place. Should have done that in yep. the first place. Gamble's kind of that injection of just raw fury. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got that um, jazz to vanger about him, That just that anger. I love yep. it. Uh, Angus Crichton is set to start. I mean, it's like a Roosters second row forward rule mm. then, right? It's like uh, one week it's Satili, then it's Siwa, then it's Angus, Nat Butcher. I don't know. I mean, for Supercoach, it's just awkward. Yeah, I think it's one to just sort of have a good look at. He's a, a gun of Supercoach in the past, so if he can hold that spot, then he might be someone to sort of pencil in for coming weeks, but I'd be reluctant just with the way they've moved a the bits and pieces about. 100%. I mean, Nat Butcher made, I don't know, 63 tackles, 65 tackles uh, on the weekend, and, and that's what he's going to do. So maybe Robbo is going to settle one in and then find which one of them can provide mm. the attack that he wants. I don't know. Uh, Preston's gone at the Dogs for five to six weeks. Now, we were asked, I asked you before we came on, Kidioni Kortoga. Excuse me if the pronunciation's wrong. It certainly is. Tough one. Yeah, from Fiji. Um, he's coming into the squad, but my guess is he won't start. It's hard to work out at the Dogs. Lots of bits there. Yeah, my initial thought is they'd probably stick Curran to second row, but you sort of mentioned the possibility of um, Jamin Salmon there. Played a lot of second row for the Panthers, mm. even off the bench as well for them. So maybe they go that way and have Curran at lock, but then that seems like changing two bits around. You're kind of Peter for, to yeah. pay Paul, aren't you? And that's like Curran provides that impact off the bench when they get rid of, you know, when Liam yeah. Knight comes off and Curran comes on and gets them going again. So, yeah, they've got so much utility within that side. It's, it's really, you know, hard to work out which way they are going to go with it. Yeah. I mean, we should know in four minutes' time. But, you nice. know, it's nothing like a bit of prognostication. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're here for. So... We've got to fill in time. Tom has notes here. Fill in time until teams drop. You have some questions. I, yeah. I think they're coming in 
largely about who a, gets dual position. It wasn't a bad question. We've got one from Josh Wilkinson. He wants to know, with Metcalf out for three to five months, does CHT get uh, a dual 5.8 added next week? I'll ask you that part first so I don't over... Oh, OK, yep. easy. No. Uh, positions don't get added on a go-forward basis. It's Now it's got to be you've played in that position. Usually three weeks is what we're looking at. He's not going to have time to get there before the first dual position changes, which are ahead of round six. And Tom Sangster will be doing those. Holders, bowlers, I have nice. nothing to do with them, so there's no point. That is my question, because I sort of was, forgot whether it was ahead of round six or after round six. I believe six. it's going into round six as nice. the goal. Into round six, into 12, into 18. Beautiful. And the next part of his question was, does Plath get dual second row added when, uh, even when he's suspended? That's another good question. Isn't it? So Plath? as far as I'm aware, was locked in as getting dual. Yep. Um, because he's played three games. Each of them, he really was a lock, um, as opposed to a... I think we've got him at 5 eight, which is where he played yep. before. He's a 5 eight eight, hooker, yeah. lock, and he's been playing lock. Maybe because Ray Stone was hurt, maybe not, but that's where he's playing, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be locked in. Yeah, I sort of think it makes sense as well. I'm not an owner, but just with the amount of depth they've got in the halves as yeah. well, it's very unlikely he probably plays in that position for them. Yeah, look, hands up, we get some wrong. You yeah, know, yeah. I think, you know, we, we may have got that I one wrong. I wasn't trying to be critical. No, 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 yeah. no, no, you know. Sure. Yeah, it, it, we deserve some criticism yep, sometimes, yep. and it's all Tom's fault. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> when uh, got here. Any other questions while we... Wait, uh, so we'll no, that's kind of all we've got at the moment. Okay. Um, so, Storm are back. What's the most important thing for you out of the Storm returning? Well, if Munster's back, that's huge. Obviously, um, Hughes had just the one week off after sort of uh, ref pushing gate. Um, <laughs> ref pushing gate. Yeah, and I think... I'm not too sure if Nelson asked for Solomon is back, but I think that's a huge thing... For them, especially for grant owners as well, him getting that quick play the ball and being a bit of a nuisance to handle and then Grant being able to be creative off the back of that, well, which I think they've sort of lacked over the last couple of weeks. Storm Broncos team's in and Munster's there. So before we came on air, they were talking, I can't think who filed it, maybe Pete Bedell, that he'd asked Frank Panisi, you know, is this Ducks and Drakes with Munster? He said, no, no, if we name him, he's playing. Um, but he's still got to get through a run as well. So while Munster is named, he's not a guarantee to start. Mm. As a grant owner, I'm really glad to see Munster and Hughes there. I just think it's going to unlock him a little bit yeah. as someone who held on. Um, no Nelson is safe for Solomona. Uh, Eliezer Katoa. That's a name I keep looking at as real tempting to sort of... Having gone cheap and mid-range my second row forwards. Yeah, he's one I'm super keen on. I was real keen on him in the pre-season. Yeah. Um, obviously, Ola Kawatu is looking really good as well, but I think those two are potentially probably the best two for the season. Even calling it early, I think they might be the, unless for, you know for feeders obviously to come into the frame as well. That'd be the top three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm real big on Gatoa. I'd be keen to bring him in as soon as I can. Probably not this week, just because I've got other cheapies I sort of want to bring in, and mm -hmm. I don't want to boost if I don't have to. But yeah, real keen on him. I think he's going to be awesome, especially with the full strength of that side. Speaking of uh, full strength, the Broncos, I'm trying to find a segue. It was a bit of a long yep. run, but I'll do my best. Um, Xavier Willison's out. Oh, wow. So that's big news, right? I always thought he was the cheapy, like the risky cheapy, but he's really popular. But I would have paid a bit more and gone to Fletcher Baker. Get the guy who's starting now while Haas is out, and then we'll go to the bench, as opposed to the guy who's come onto the bench. Gigi had a nice pass on the weekend to, to the trial. I was just like right on, like near the trial line. It was big. It was a big ball too. Like, yeah. Nailed it. Um, Unlike Junior Paulo who tried to do a pass yeah. <laughs> over the sideline. There was, um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I do, I do like that. All right, well, so that's the news out of that game. Munster's back and Willison is out. Uh, Tristan Saylor is still there at fullback. Um, I was thinking about bringing him in this week for Saylor. Lolo. No, Willison. Because oh, I've okay. got Lolo still there. But yeah. then that was kind of like, now I can just not have to worry about having to do that. Because he's had a low BE as well. So Yeah, I think he was about one. I, I just always had Willison as a bit of a trap. Oh, that's good. I forgot the boys could put that up. They can put up the team list there. Save awesome. me looking down at my phone. 
Um, Ryan Pappenhausen, there's a name since we've got it up there. I'm seeing a fair few people who are dumping turbo and picking up Pappenhausen. What do you think about that? Uh... Don't don't mind it. I reckon there's probably other guys to go to. I'd prefer to go to Drinkwater or Ponga mm. if I was a non-owner of either of those two. Mm. Especially Drinkwater with the Titans this week. Like yeah. Their draw does toughen up after that, the Cowboys. And so a lot of people are hopping into Val Holmes. I know we should yeah, probably be Yeah, I think it might be a short-term play. Like For me, like if you're going to get off Turbo, Turbo plays the Titans in three rounds. So you'd be a two-week sort of play. I'm tempted to hold. The only reason about holding Turbo, I think, is like Penrith's a tough matchup. Mm. But he's got the Warriors next week. Yeah, Warriors are tough, but Kale Pong had just put on 100 points against the Warriors. They've without a, a fair few points to fullbacks. Yeah, yeah. So it's a one-week sort of play, I think. If you can be patient with Tommy, he's probably a hold. I think the best is yet to come. He's, a hold. he's doing nothing, and he's averaging 70. Yeah, uh, I think me, people are just getting just really like nervous about that big one that are on the cards from some of the other players but I think Pappenhausen he's um, playing the the Broncos this week and yeah. they were really gritty last week they were so yeah. I don't know it's the perfect matchup but maybe his BE I haven't looked at him close enough as screaming pick me now but yeah. he's going up in cash I'm not too sure I don't, I don't think so I, I, I just think it's a it's a case of people panicking with fullbacks and um, is it Drew Johnson a bloke who I sort of interact with on Twitter sometimes and he seems to find the joy in life so he won't mind me calling him out on this. Mm -hmm. He had a policy last year where he would trade a fullback every week pretty much. Yeah. He just kept rotating in his fullbacks trying to get the guy and it almost never works. It's yeah. like you, you, you would have thought Turbo would go great against the Dragons. And well, Sam's he had a miserable one. The you know? podcast like, I do, shout out to Supercoach Experience. Uh, little plug. Um, <laughs> Say it again. Supercoach you know, Experience. Yeah, you go. Go. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to cheat you one in. He, he did that recently, and he's big on a rotation policy and sort of trying to get those matchups. And I mean, he, I'm not to bat, like bag the guy out, but he, he sold Teddy when he went massive two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, so, and he brought. Turbo in, which didn't work out. So sometimes on paper and matchup, it looks like it's going to work out, but mm. you sometimes value is the trade worth it? Because um, we are going to, you know, sort of need them in the back end still. Yeah, but that is beautiful. That's a high quality segue straight into the next game, which is the Dogs against the Roosters. Teddy's there. Um, what are the changes? Let me have a quick look. Sam Hughes is starting at prop. Now, well, I don't hate that for the dogs because no offence to Liam Knight, but he didn't give a lot of impact, I thought, as a starter. I he, thought in his first game he was okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm strictly talking last, last week. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's not to say that he hasn't over the course of his career and, mm. you know, like he's a perfectly good NRL player, but it's, I just thought last week they didn't get anything from him and then they, they had to, like, get rolling again once he came off. I think... Hughes' starter is a pretty interesting Well, pick. he's very popular for super coach owners, and I think a lot of people were starting to get a bit frustrating, wondering whether they should sideways trade to a guy like Xavier, Xavier Wilson. Xavier Wilson, now so out. this news yeah. might save people a few trades, right? Yeah, or change yeah. their trades, or make yeah. it a lot more freer to do some more creative trades. So that's, that's great for super coach. Your um, man, current starting on an edge. So yes. that's probably not the worst thing for my man Salmon, who's starting at lock and might get a bit more time there. So you've got Kurtman. Well, I still think... I don't think Karen's been coming on for Salmon at all. I think he's been coming on for the props. For the props. Oh, you're just Kurtman. saying that because you're trying really to get... Really pushing ca the... You are campaigning yeah. I'm your very, I'm, position. I respect Well, I brought him I in because him. I thought that was the way that the community was going <laughs> with the dual positioning. So I thought, I've got to get ahead of this and bring him in here. Even though I boosted to do it. So, yeah, I'm really keen for him to get it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look, I think as a podcaster, you get one. Like, you get given one, so that can be it. Um, who else have we got? Harrison Edwards comes in, so it's Guru's been pushing for this summer. one, so Guru can have Karen. I'll take mine later in the year. Yeah, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Um, Kurt Mann, Harrison Edwards, no... Um, who's the bloke who speared Cam Murray? Morin. Yeah, he's out. He's out for two weeks. Um, other than that, not a huge amount of change at the Dogs of Interest for the Roosters. It's as we expected. So Angus Crichton's starting. Uh, Nat Butcher there. I mean, Crichton, it's hard to get excited when we know there's going to be movement. Uh, Lindsay Collins is starting. Bad for Terrell May, but it doesn't matter for May, right? He'll come on first change and probably play out the game. Yeah, it's always better if he starts just because if there's, you know, injuries, he's going to stay on the field and yeah. stuff like that. But showed coming off the bench, he's... 
he's a lead still. And Robbo's been quite happy to name him on the bench and start him. You yeah. know, with an hour to cha- go, it changes. So. I don't think he'll be moving from many people's sides oh, this year. I think no. he's probably a season long. I think so. Keeper. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else really of interest at the Dogs and Roosters for you, mate? Mainly just um, Dom Young owners. Hopefully, we get repaid this week. It was a bit, you know, tough position that we'll put in up against the Panthers with the low BE yeah. last week. It's sort of short term pain for long term gain. I still think he's a good thing. So let's go, Dom Young owners. Did you invest? Did you going into last week? Yeah, I was. I was hoping for a, I was a fifty. I thought would be. I'll take yeah. thirty. Was a little bit disappointing, but it's only twenty points off what I was. Expecting, so it's not the end of the world. It's very hard against Penrith. I mean, because you play Penrith, you're playing against. They smothered the hell out of him. You're playing the ref as well. I mean, it's just <laughs> a known fact, right? I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not salty. <laughs> I'm not salty as a Roosters, Roosters fan, I swear. All right, what do we got next? Knights and the Dragons. Oof, geez, the Dragons. Do you think they played well or did they bring Manly down to their level? Well, they both um, made ridiculous amount of mistakes. Like, it was just the most yucky watch. It was just frustrating for Supercoach. It was frustrating as probably non-Supercoach, just neutral watchers Mm -hmm. of the game. Um, Yeah, the the Dragons are hard to get a read on. They can be gritty. They can not turn up for a bit. They can start for a game well and then fall off, but... There's, I think they're still quite super coach like relevant in in patches. Well, I mean, the, for the Dragons, it's 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 almost guys I don't understand. So Tom Eisenhuth is one I've had a really good look at this mm. week, and I'm still scared of him. And I don't know, maybe it's like all those years of him being a Mister Fix It spot player at the Storm. Mm. Is he now going to step up and become a legitimate keeper? But he's averaging fifties. He's available in the centre wing. He's starting at lock this week. It's kind of tempting. Would have been a mad thing to start with him at about 100k less. I think he's gone up a bit. That's my issue. Mm. Yeah, it's now 100k more. probably not more. a bad buy. He probably lacks the upside, so which is, and he's probably not going to make a great deal of money. So I'm not overly in love with it as a yeah. trade in. If you got him, I think it's pretty. I think if he's one snazzy. of those ones. If you had him, well played. If you haven't, don't get him. But Pierce Paul is a guy that I didn't have and I am going to get. Oh, and yeah. I think you are too this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm bringing yeah? him in this week, yeah. Yeah, that frustrates the pants off me because I talked him up all pre-season as a bloke. Ah, stash him. The Knights are going to start him as soon as he's yeah. fit. They didn't do it. But just with the amount of other options that were just maybe about 50k more, 100k more that were yeah. looked like sure starters, 80-minute players. Yeah. And him, you know, coming <laughs> off the bench. Just now that we know what his role is, does look like it's pretty locked in, and the attack's still not come yet. Like the big, like I think there's going to be seventies, eighties, nineties, and there's a ton. I think so. I think so. He's got. He's got. Dare we say it? The, is the English sunny bill? He will have the odd forty. <laughs> yeah, he will have the odd forty, fifty, and stuff. So I'm not going yeah. to hype him up too much, but. Yeah, he's making a lot of tackles and just his height and range. I just love the idea of him popping it out to Ponga. And Correct. Yeah. Still, so on that, um, at the Knights, Gagai's back, um, which means Dylan Lucas has gone straight to the reserves. If you were a Dylan Lucas truther to start the season, I think you've just... This is it. You, you know, he, he came on last week to replace Gagai late notice at centre and scored 50-odd, but you've got to cut the cord and go to Pierce Paul this week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to make still money, and I think he's very playable and potentially, potentially a keeper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else from that game that catches your eye? Uh, not particularly. Zach Lomax. Yeah. I'm all in on as a as an option, but the news today that he's been told by the Dragons he's free to leave the club. He can go and negotiate with other teams. Yeah. If they get a swap they like, then they'll yeah they'll trade him out. You know, at any point in this season, it's a question mark, right? I'm an owner. I'm happy enough to own at the moment. As a buyer, I think it's a little bit awkward just because, like, a part of it's good because if he's playing for a contract, he kind of sort of the the old contract year thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then a part of me is like, if he's he's on the way out or whatever, there's a part of me that where it's like, maybe he drops the kicking. Maybe they go, oh, we'll just give Flanagan the kicking. Then now, if you're on the out, that drops a lot of his. his value for yeah. us, yeah. yeah. Maybe they get, just get annoyed with him and drop him to reserves and give someone else a go, one of the fee guys or something like that. So, yeah, I don't know. See what happens. See what I'll play him happens. as long as I got him, but yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So, let's move on. Rabbitohs, Warriors, CNK is back. Huge for Torpiki owners. We kind of knew it was coming. Uh, it's yeah. an unfortunate truth. Um, RTS moves back to the centres. 
Oh, what else have we got there? Jackson Ford is killing it on an edge for Gone under the radar, Warriors. Yeah. yeah, he's averaging 50 in base, going really well. I sort of was tempted by him, but in the end, I think I'll avoid. And I'm looking at Cam Murray, bringing Cam Murray in. He's just a gun. Yep. 6.30k. How about you? What do you like in this game? Yeah, I, I, I don't mind Cam Murray and some of the... Like, his AO and... and um, Carrigan, they, they've, uh, they've got that appeal for that 70 that you plug in. I'm just like this greedy guy that always chases, like, hundreds that obviously aren't always going to come and end up taking a bit of a 50 hit in my side. Well, he's 100k cheaper than Hopgood. So, yeah. in the end, I make that decision. See, that's the difference. That's why you win. And oh, I, I never I'm making get close. some pork chop decisions on the fly. But you year. chase the upside, right? I, I always play super coach for safety, mm. and I never think of chasing. I, I, I never allow myself to chase the upside. But it's, yeah, I think it's if you chase the upside the with enough of your side, you know, say you've got eight ups, real upside guys, yeah. four of them go off, the others don't, so it marries up. But when they all go off, that's a week when you can sort of really, really jump up. up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hot tip for all of the young players. Don't play like me. Play like the guy who won it. Um, anything else that you like at this game? You, you were saying before we came on that AFB is an interest to you. Like I'd oh, later in the season, I, not so much yet. I'm still happy to plug these. Mid, like I've got Henry doing a job for me until Fisher Han, uh, Harris comes back and yeah. then Taylor May. and Yeah, I'm not so keen just yet. I always but. struggle with an AFB because... He's not Mr. Workaholic, right? Mm. So his base is more like 40 than 55, like maybe yeah. the elite props. But he scores so many tries. He does score a lot. Of... A yeah. big man, he can find a hole that fits his frame. All right, let's go to your guys. Sea Eagles against the Panthers. What have we got here? Taylor May held his spot, and he's holding his spot in my team for now. He's very popular sell, though. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I can understand why people are sort of considering selling. He might be one of those guys that you sell, though, and then just starts really lighting it up. I think him and Tago have both got so much ability on either side. Penrith have been favouring the right a lot. A, the couple of the weeks have been just due to circumstance with injuries to the other side. So just, the Panthers just targeting weaknesses. Hmm. Um, they so were very good at that, weren't they? Yeah. As soon as the centre went off and a second row slid out there, that's where the ball went. So, yeah, it's been a bit unlucky for take, uh, for May owners. Just, you know, I'm one of them, obviously, as well. Plenty are um, just not seeing as much ball. I thought last week was a good chance with um, Cleary out. I thought he would get a lot more ball just with Luai. Uh, I can never get his name right. Luai. Over Luai. Yeah, bring it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerome, yeah. yeah. Um, just sort of get more ball through him, but just didn't sort of turn out. I think you can be patient with him, but if you if you are stacked and you don't know who to sell and there are other cheapies you want to bring in, I don't think it's a terrible sell either. But well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for you. Okay. Penrith fan, happy. Yep. James Fisher-Harris is back. Liam Henry fans... Not so happy. I mean, it doesn't kill him, right? He's still going to play decent minutes, and and the bench is Dane Laurie, Lindsay Smith, Henry, and Eisenhuth. So oh, no, it's really three a headache for Supercar. I'll be like, yeah, I can ride him for a couple of weeks because <laughs> my other bloke's Lolo. Yeah, and Lolo's got the Titans this week, so he's due for a fifteen-minute game. Yes, because the score will get run up and it'll be all over. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way it's gone, he's actually gone scores of like 40-20, 40-20. 40, so he's due for the 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that Fish is back. I didn't think they'd risk him in this game. But mm. obviously he's come up good. What else have we talked about? Tommy Turbo there, Dylan Edwards, kicking goals. Um, I still can't get him compared to all the other fullbacks, as good as he is yeah. in real life. And, and he has these big games in Supercoach, but then he'll do all this work and only score 48. You know? Yeah, his attack really lifted without Cleary then. I think that'll probably happen over... You might only... Uh, Cleary's only out for maybe another week. It's one more than a buy, then he's back. Exactly. So you're only getting so one game. If yeah. you're going to go that sort of um, less upper side sort of um, play, I'd probably look to, like, Gutho. He's going to have that sort of kicking role in his side. Mm. He's more of that sort of guy that fills in as well. So. And he's not cheap, Dylan Edwards. Like, yeah, he's, no. he's right up there with the, the elites, as he probably should be, you know. Um... Other than that, nothing really at this game for me. You? 
Ben Tommy Tom- Talao's still there. Tommy Talao. Um, yeah. Ben Turbo's there. Tommy Talao's on the on the wing. Yeah. So he did, he had a pretty low score this weekend, but he's he's gonna he's gonna have a lowish break even this weekend. But I think a lot of people are just gonna have their eyes on Blaze Talungi. But yeah, not a bad um, option still. Probably not, not this week, particularly with the Panthers. I wouldn't be expecting much from him, but maybe next couple of weeks. When does Saab come back? It's a way. It's a ways off. Yeah, I thought it was six weeks or something. I don't know. No, I think you're right. I think Talao might have enough time. Um, Olakawatu had a hell of a game. But yeah. uh, late try was frustrating as a non-owner yeah. because he's been looking really, really good, but still only getting that fifty points where it's like, oh, good, he's not scoring that good. Like as a non-owner, yeah. But yeah, when he gets those tries, it's like tries, a Reece Walsh guy. You, you ride him to the yeah. death, and then the last three minutes he scores a try. I guess that's how people would have felt about um, uh, Hines on Hines, the weekend as non-owners. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, because yeah, he got that line break at the end that really helped. But him. yeah, Alkawad, they're just targeting him so much, and especially on particular matchups where they do see like a really yep. small um, half or something like that. They'll just go at it five times in a row. Correct. It's a bit like Penrith. Find the weakness, mm. hammer the weakness. Um, all right, Saturday night, Dolphins against the Tigers. Now, I think it started the year. You would have written this up as, oh, Dolphins are going to rack up some big points, but the Tigers have been resilient. A yeah. word that I don't normally, haven't used about the Tigers in a long time. Yeah, it's an exciting game. There's a lot of narrative around this, you know. They've got <laughs> um, oldest coach in the game or the most experienced versus the least experienced mm-hmm. they've obviously had they've experience in their careers yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff and then the Jeremy Marshall King and um, oh, yeah, the uh, brother in or half brother yeah, and, yeah, 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 there's dynamic. lots there yeah. and I think everyone sort of kind of roots for both of these sides too they're both kind of underdogs as well so oh no 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 Dolphins are from Queensland I hate <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind them but, but um, yeah 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 up fins up um <laughs> Yeah, I think this will be an exciting game. It's a shame that Galvin's out. Um, but, yeah, exciting to see what this other young fella can do in his place. They've still got um, Caesar named in, on my yeah, app. Yeah, no, they've named Sullivan. So our mail was that... Um, oh, yeah, and Sullivan, yeah. Oh, so Fino's there. He's on the interchange. So Sullivan's named to start and Fino on the bench. Yeah, that kind of hurts. Um, I mean, he was never super coach relevant because Galvin was going to come back before he got in. Yeah, I just, um, for, I just, um, for, I just thought it might have been a better dynamic for the side. Just, to, but who knows? Ben or Chuck and Benji, he's doing well. Yeah, he is. Um, at the Dolphins, Hammer. Did you get on the Hammer? No, I don't really want to talk too much about this. Oh, Hammer, Jack Bostock. Should we had, bring him yeah, up as well? Bring him up either. So, <laughs> Hammer, I've had him in my pl- trade plans after watching him play the first yeah. game he played. I was like, I'm bringing him in. I've, I've stacked my centers up, so I had one more position to stack up. Dom Young had that massive score. Right. And I thought, you know, I'll just marry Shut. Like, Dom Young's, I'll, I'll pick him for the top try score. I love the attack in that side. And then looking at Hammer scores last year, there's like some really nice ones. But you'll take most of them. They're really, really good scores. But I'm that greedy guy that wants the tons. He's only had one ton prior to that game. So there's probably a lot more coming. I think he's beefed up a little bit. He's now an Origin player. He's one year on his career. But. Yeah, you can't have them all. Mm. I think there will be low games, but I think he's still a great buy that people have picked up. Yeah, I, I don't He did play the Titans last week, to be fair. That, that's a key part. Yeah, you, you get that sort of Titans and, and the Bulldogs boost, right? So yeah. keep it in mind when you're looking. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just was happy to see Jack Bostock go well. Yeah, yeah so I sold out him there. for Lomax um, round <laughs> Sorry, one. Matt. It was tough, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, every week he sort of looked like more and more not of a sell. And then last week it was just like, ah... Yeah, frustrating. Um, That's a perfect segue into frustration, which is the Titans. Um, Bo Firma, just me personally, uh, I'm selling. Mm-hmm. I just feel he's maybe, oh, I, I just had it wrong. He's, you know, he hadn't regained the step, you know, that speed that he'd had before the ACL, and, and that's not surprising. But he and Cleese Haas are named to start, and Fafita's on the bench again. Now, Fafita scored, what, 50-odd in 50 minutes? Mm-hmm. Definitely on my watch list, and I'm hoping for a few more 50s yeah. so we can all get him at 700k instead of 830. That would be ideal. Yeah, so I think when he came on, he ended up playing through the left, which is takes away from Fermor when he yes. moved to, to the right anyway, yeah. Yeah. off when he's not playing off Kim for us. So not a bad sell. No, yeah, not a bad sell. Anything else at this? Oh, I, I don't have Val Holmes. I suppose that's the other one I'd mention, which is Val Holmes, I think, is now at 840k. Mm. I know this is a very positive matchup, um, and he's had big games, but the Val Holmes, 
even when Val Holmes was going well, he was more like he just kept getting 70 to 90, 70 yeah. to 90. He didn't really go big and little. So I feel maybe you're overpaying a little for Val Holmes now, and I'd be looking at, like, the 640K I can get Joey Manu. That's 200K difference, and I can use that yeah. elsewhere. What do you think? I don't mind. Like, I, I think Joey Manu could go close enough to matching him in that side. He does like to hold on to the ball and back himself and trust that he can score. It's nice to say. If it's a last second, he can't selfish. Yeah, give it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Val Holmes owner, and he's kind of potty still, and I'd, I'd prefer people to stay off him, to be fair, and it'd be better <laughs> for my my team. But oh, I'd encourage people to buy him and still pay up, to be fair. like He's got the goal kicking, which is a, in, the, in that side, yep. the amount of points they're going to score on a lot of games. Yep. It's a huge buffer. He looks so great. At the back, and he's, he's more often than not going to have a try or a try assist in his game. I can completely understand that my saying that he's a risk is just my sourness. That's Sometimes, we, yeah, well, it, the, you are paying up, so but I think he could be worth it. I think we can probably all afford to pay up for guys like this at the moment with the amount of ways that we're you know not having Cleary temporarily, and we're yeah. all guns that have fallen, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get to the last game because I think we're getting near to our time. Um, Raiders, Eels, oof, I don't know. There's not a lot of interest here. Morgan Smithies has held his spot. Corey Horsburgh's on the bench. Um, Blaze Talangi's held his spot. Automatic buy, right? Yeah, Matt, like minus 55 break even. It's a little bit like a little bit stressful with um, Dejan Arcee and Dejan Arcee working around. Yeah. yeah. But, but I'm just going to back it because, yeah, he looks so... If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. If it goes right and you don't get on, you've really missed out. So, yeah, it's going to make a lot of cash. He looks fantastic. He's like a little mini Dylan Brown. He, it's almost... It's it's like uncanny. Yeah, Not it's just, like one of those yeah, little yeah. Russian things where they take it the, out the of the... Babushka dolls, I yeah, think. Yeah, definitely yeah, like yeah, one of the yeah. Babushka dolls. Um, and, and it's just the way they play. Very similar runners, mm. very solid defence. Geez, the Eels have got a good one there. Um, I'll just say when the last one was the Raiders that well done Xavier Savage you've held your spot because he made some errors against the Sharks that probably mm. made Ricky's head explode so you yeah. know the narrative going into the start of the season by me was that Ricky hated Xavier Savage clearly doesn't maybe the early try he had had enough of creativity and yeah. you know goodness like about it that sort of let that sort of bring it back a little bit because that was a nice try that was a nice try and it was the sort of thing that Xavier Savage can do with his speed yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, let me get back to that uh, page and we'll see what we've got up. Sorry for the delay, fellas. Uh, we, uh, no, we've only got... Let's go Bentakura. Bentakura? So just a bit of a shout-out. Oh, we've got four hey, comments here. Oh, we've got to put that on mute. Sorry about that. Let's go That's me Bentacura. talking. Uh, that was a bit awkward. Okay, question from... Jesse Luke Williamson did, and he'll have a binder against the Titans. It's a bit of a statement. I think most of the cows are going to have blinders. I think any, yeah, if you've got any play them. Yeah, I think the 5 8 is really tricky at the moment. Like, I've got Dylan Brown there, and he's, it's to be fair, he's not gone tremendously. He hasn't gone terribly, but you know, he's just like mid 50s. And you think, oh, it's a lot of money for mid 50s, so I'll downgrade. But no one else at 5 8 has really gone pick me. Yep. So I feel I'd like he would have been a trade. mad sell if Galvin was still available just to play if the next couple of weeks. Like it'd be super fine just playing him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it is a bit annoying. But now that Galvin's out, Platt's out. You know, there's no obvious five eighth choices. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Brooks even was the safe pick for those who were selling Cleary, and that didn't really work. So you know, people might have burned a trade there. Yeah, five eight is a bit of a stressful place. Um, I think maybe just be patient. You know, it's not potentially, it's not my strength. Potentially, a couple of weeks, Cody Walker could be someone we're talking about. If yeah, the, true. If the uh, bunnies can sort of put together some form, and Cam uh, Cam Hunt's been staying the field, so maybe just uh, he's not, his PE is not out of control. I think it's still only in the eighties. Is that your name? Yeah, it's it's around there. I don't, it's it's as I say, he hasn't gone badly. He's just yeah. sort of holding on. Any other questions to jump out, or should we wrap it up? I think we should probably wrap her up. Fair enough. Um, Tom will be back next week. Um, I'm not sure. Tim, are you coming uh, on? Sales will be here next week. Okay. So we've got all the pros back, and we'll be on the bench where we probably deserve to be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, good luck to you all. Cheers.